Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about a cool rifle that I have in my collection, but also Jason the cameraman has one in his collection as well too. We have them both out here this afternoon. The rifle I want to talk about is the Daewoo K2 rifle. This one that I'm holding was imported in the 1990s before the Clinton ban of 1994 as the Max 2 carbine. It's a, uh, a pre-ban rifle and it's also a rifle that's currently being used by the South Korean military forces. In the 1970s, the South Koreans knew that their license to manufacture the Colt M16A1 was going to run out. So the president of the time, I believe his name was Park Chung-hee, decided to have a rifle built domestically for their, for their own military's use. He's a very nationalistic man and decided, of course, to develop all their own small arms in-house, which also trickled down into their handguns, which Lionheart Industries is importing their, um, their pistol as well. So the rifle is a 5.56 semi-automatic rifle. It has a long stroke gas system piston in it, and it does not have the facilities, obviously, for uh, full auto fire. You can see how the receiver's cut here. It's a standard AR-15 type trigger system. Matter of fact, the gun borrows very heavily from the AR-15 in its design, although uh, it, it also takes a radical departure, obviously, especially with the gas system. But let's take a look at that gas system as well. The gun has a lot of similarities to various rifles. Um, the AK comes to mind. Of course, the M16 comes to mind. The FNC comes to mind. Now, as I take this bolt carrier out, you'll see how the bolt carrier separates from the gas piston system, has an AR-15 M16 style bolt, and then the long stroke gas piston system. Very much like an AK, just a two-piece AK bolt carrier. So the gun's really, really simple to use, extremely reliable, and like I said, the Koreans have been using them since the 70s. The development started around uh, the early 70s, I believe, continued through 1982, and I believe the rifle went into military service around 1984. Let me go ahead and put this together right. Got to put the charging handle back in it. There we go. All right. And like I said, it continues on to military service today. Unfortunately, the guns are no longer being imported. After the Clinton ban, they, um, they did bring some of them into the country as the DR200, and that's what I'm holding here. This is Jason's rifle. Now, this one's been converted to use a standard AR-15 stock. They came into the country with thumb hole stocks. This is U.S.-produced pistol grip that replicates the contour of the original South Korean pistol grip. And then Stormworks makes an adapter to put a standard AR-15 buttstock on it. And also Stormworks makes this 1913 rail that screws into existing holes that are uh, drilled and tapped on the top of the receiver. When I buy older firearms, if I didn't already have them in my collection, I like to get them in as original condition as possible. This rifle, the Max 2, when I purchased it, it came with its original shipping box. This is what they would have shipped in back in the 90s when they were still coming in the country. This one's a little bit beat up as boxes will be. Still has the cleaning kit and all that stuff sealed. It's original sling and its original 30 round magazine. It's a very sparse box, but it's still cool to have nonetheless. It's just one more thing to try to keep nice, but it just kind of adds to the collectability of the firearm. Now in the intro, I kind of broke the rifle down, but I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail here. The gun is very simple to field strip. You have back here a push button that you can lock. So here with this little tab flipped this way, it will allow you to push it forward to disassemble the gun flip the tab this way and it prevents the button from going forward so the gun can't come apart in the field while being used. So flip your little takedown tab back, push forward on this, and the gun just hinges forward just like an AR-15. Again, this gun borrows heavily from the AR-15 design. Up front you have a push pin. If you wiggle it around, you can get that push pin to come out. Let's go ahead and take the bolt out first, a little bit easier. To take the mainspring out of the gun, just pull it to the rear, 
pull the charging handle back. Now this is a, a standard charging handle, but the person I bought it from put this upgrade on it, which is like a little rubber grommet that goes around the outside of it that makes it a little softer to grab a hold of. I may cut that off eventually. And then once you pull it back to its disassembly slot, the charging handle just comes right out. Then the bolt and the gas piston system slide out the rear. Okay, again, it's a long stroke gas piston system. And these two components just set together. You can see how they fit together, how they interface. All right, very simple. Now the bolt and carrier is very much an AR-15 bolt and carrier, right? M minus the gas key and the extra link for the buffer assembly because this rifle has a folding stock, it's not required. To take it apart, it's just like an AR-15. You have your little cotter pin here that you pull out. Your firing pin will slide out the rear. Then you can turn this. Actually, it makes it a little bit easier to disassemble because you don't have the gas key on top. And then you take your bolt out. Now you'll notice the bolt's different as well. There's no gas piston rings on it because again, it operates in a different way than the standard AR-15 does. To disassemble the upper receiver again, just pull that little pin and now the upper and lowers come apart. The stock is a very simple me mechanism. You just pull it down like this and rotate it to the side and it'll lock, it'll lock itself in the folded position. Push down on it again, bring it back around and the stock extends. So it makes for a very short, compact package. Here's the ejector on the lower receiver. You have a standard paddle release here for the bolt. You can see how it operates just like an AR-15. The ejector and then the AR-15 type hammer system. Another odd feature is the selector lever itself. Here it's on safe, you rotate it all the way around to fire. This thing will rotate either direction. You can go back the other way if you want. Okay, there are other safety levers out there on the market that you can put in there that'll make it a half turn, just like a standard AR-15, but I choose to leave this rifle in its original condition. You can take the hand guards off by using a flathead screwdriver, unscrewing this, it's like an FAL, and then it, it comes off in two pieces, has a heat shield and stuff in there. The front sight is right here. It's a cast unit. The front sight is fixed. The front sight is not adjustable for windage or elevation. All that's done with the rear sight. And then you have the adjustable gas piston system here. So you can adjust the gas system. You'll see that there's different markings on the face of the plug and a little arrow here indicating which one you've selected. This one has a three cut flash suppressor slash muzzle brake. So you can see how it's solid most of the way around, and then you have three slits here. I mean, that's a half by 28 thread on there. And it is using a jam nut to clock that muzzle device. Putting it back together is really simple. Just basically reverse the process here. Put your bolt in. Cam pin, rotate it. My firing pin's a bit cruddy. Let's clean that off while we have it apart. There we go, stick the firing pin in. Make sure everything's pushed all the way forward. Cotter pin in there. All right, that's back together. Pin my upper and lower back together here really quick. Now, the easiest way I found to do this, take your gas piston, put it in first, leave it out about there, marry the bolt to the piston and just slide them in together. Now you want to make sure that you leave the slot in the proper position there so you can put your charging handle back on. Slide that in, make sure your lever is in the disassembly uh, position. And when you put it back together, you'll notice it wants to hit the receiver here. So you want to be careful, it's really easy to booger the gun up, push that in and locked into place, the gun's back together. There it is with its stock folded. Yes, you can fire it with the stock folded. And here it is again with the stock extended. The rear sight is adjustable for windage and elevation. Over here on the left-hand side, this is where you're going to make adjustments to your elevation. And then over here on the other side, it looks like a standard A1 windage adjustment knob. So that's where you do all your, your um, adjustments to your sights. The front sight you don't mess with. You can also see this drilled and tapped here for the use of that 1913 rail or mounting other optics. The South Koreans actually use that to mount optics as well. This rifle has a bayonet lug on it, so it has the evil features, thereby, you know, telling us it is a pre-ban rifle. So let's take a little closer look at the post-ban rifle as well.
The DR200 is the post band version of the K2 rifle or the Max 2 rifle in my case. And as you can see, it looks very similar to the original rifle. Now, one thing that this rifle is missing that the original post band rifle had was the thumb hole stock. I'll put a picture up of what that would look like. It's been replaced with the Stormworks mount, standard AR-15 stock, and this U.S. domestically produced replica of the Daewoo pistol grip, which makes the rifle look a lot better, in my opinion. Uh, the thumbhole stock on it is not all that comfortable. I've shot them that way. But they made a few other cosmetic changes for the most part to the gun to make it compliant with the 1994 assault weapons ban. Starting at the rear of the rifle, working up, the first thing you'll notice is the lack of a sling mount. If you look on the pre-band rifle, you can see where the sling mount is here in the rear. Okay, so they've removed that for some reason. The controls, however, have remained the same. The selector lever works just like the pre-band rifle, and pretty much all the fire controls are identical, as, as well as the rear sight and stu stuff like that. Moving forward on the gun, you'll notice that the importer is now Kimber, all right, so Kimber of Clackamas, Oregon, before they moved out east, the people that make 1911s, they imported these things after the ban. So you'll have different import marks on it here. Moving forward, the sling swivel is in the front, even though they removed the rear one. And you'll notice the bayonet lug is now missing from the front gas block here. Moving further out, the muzzle device has been replaced. This does not have cuts in it, so it is not a flash suppressor. Again, a banned evil feature under the 1994 law. Uh, so there's no muzzle brake or flash suppressor on it. It's just a solid cone on the rifle. Still has the adjustable gas piston system and all that stuff is pretty much all the same. So as you can see, the two rifles side by side, sands the, uh, the thumb hole stock. They look very similar. All the internal components are the same and interchangeable. Shooting the DR200 is just like shooting the Max 2 or the K2 rifle. The only thing that's really different is because of the thumb hole stock delete. This AR-15 stock adapter kit makes the length of pull just a little bit longer, but it feels really good on my larger frame. The K2 rifle is just a little bit short for me, but it works really well. I mean, AKs are short for me too, but this longer stock makes, makes it feel pretty good. Other than that, it shoots just like the, uh, the Max 2 rifle. This is Wolf Gold, it's 55 grain ammunition. Get this stuff from luckygunner.com. I'm gonna go ahead and put the magazine on the rifle. Now to drop the bolt, get the paddle release. Trying to get to the magazine release though is a little bit difficult with the stock folded, but does the gun fire this way? Well, let's find out. See if I can walk some fire in on that man-sized target. <laughs> ah, probably about a 70% hit rate. So it works just fine with the stock folded. Now, guys, when I'm doing this, it's just for screwing around. Rifles that have folding stocks aren't intended to be fired with the stocks folded, even though most cases they will. The stock is only meant to be folded for transportation. If you're gonna use the weapon, extend the stock and use it normally. Firing it with the stock folded is for the most part a waste of ammunition. You can do it in emergency situations, but as soon as time allows, get your stock open and use the rifle the way it's supposed to be used. The safety lever takes a lot of getting used to having to rotate it all the way around like that. Like I said, there are replacements for it. I just want to leave my rifle in its original condition. Rotate it to fire. Yeah, this thing is really easy to shoot quick. Now here's an, an interesting fact about the gun. With the bolt locked to the rear like this, I can't rotate the safety lever from either the fire or the safe position. If I let the bolt go home, now I can once again rotate that lever. So if I put it in safe, now locking the bolt to the rear is unique here too. So like on the AR-15, you can push on the bottom of the ping pong paddle. Here you have to push on the top of it because there's no bottom to push on. So to lock the bolt to the rear, I have to push out on it with my thumb and draw the bolt to the rear like that to lock it open. Now with the bolt locked open again, I mean, I can't even budge that safety lever. So you can't make adjustments to your fire control until the bolt's home. Bolt home, now you can make adjustments to the fire control lever. All right, so once the gun runs dry, drop the magazine out, put a fresh magazine in, hit the ping pong paddle, and you can go back to shooting.
Yeah, that thing shoots really, really well. We're on the bridge over troubled water, I don't know, probably 40, 50 yards back from the firing line. Just really, really easy to shoot. Now you'll also notice that the gun has a fixed ejector, unlike the AR-15, which has a plunger and a spring. This has a fixed ejector, just like an AK, and it's winging the brass a good, I don't know, 10 yards or so that way. So it has very, very positive ejection. It's actually a pretty darn cool rifle to shoot. I like it quite a bit. Now, because it uses standard AR-15 magazines, drums, things like that are gonna work just fine. P-mags, all that stuff works just fine in the rifle. All right. Yeah, this is just one very cool gun to shoot. The hand guards are kind of heavy duty. The heat shielding works really, really good. I'm not feeling any signs of heat. You'll see that the oil was burning off the gun already. Uh, the barrel and gas system are very hot on it, but I'm feeling no heat coming through the hand guards. So those work pretty well as, as well. We're just resetting our challenge target here. Guys, this is our beater target, and we pound the snot out of this target with rifles, including with uh, M855 ball and stuff like that at ranges at 25 yards, sometimes closer. And it's just holding up so well. This target just takes a beating. Now we're starting to see a little bit of uh, signs of divoting in the steel because we are shooting it at distances that uh, are way too close and we're using stuff like in like M855 ball. But um, it's doing a really good job in, in holding its own. Eventually we're gonna turn it around and we got fresh steel on the back, which you can do. We've hit one of the, uh, the carriage bolts that goes through here um, a long time ago, so we can replace those very simply and they're very affordable. But overall, man, these little challenge targets do a great job for us here on the MAC range. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at the Max 2 rifle, the DR200 rifle from South Korea. The guns, like I said, are still available on GunBroker, although they're no longer being imported into the United States. Now, there's been rumors circulating whether or not these rifles would make a new appearance or reappear on the U.S. market, and so far, I can't confirm anything. I don't know anything for certain. It'd be cool if Lionheart Industries, for example, could bring the rifles back, but right now, it's all speculation and rumor mill stuff. We don't know anything for certain if the guns are gonna come back or not. But like I said, these are available on GunBroker. If you get a pre-ban, you're gonna pay more for it than something like a DR200 post-ban rifle. Either way, I think they're really cool additions to a rifle collection. If you guys would like to support the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to swing by and shop at Copper Custom. I'll put a link down below. Also, if you want to pick, swing by and pick up one of these MAC patches, they're $3.99, they're available at Copper Custom, and picking those up really does help us here at the Military Arms Channel. And if you guys haven't already, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon. Very cool. My little Korean buddy. Let's go home.